Hello and welcome to this episode of Casual Endeavors. Today I will be demonstrating two experiments that will help answer questions like, what is a capacitor? Why does it sometimes live here? And how does capacitance limit how fast my computer can run? Capacitors are a very simple electronic device that consists of two metal plates with a certain amount of surface area, A, and they are separated by a small distance, D. Electric current doesn't flow through a capacitor per se as the two plates are separated and not connected electrically. As current flows, a number of electrons will build up on one plate and get stripped from the other. The capacitor is able to store energy in the form of electric potential as a result of the buildup or removal of electrons from each plate. Normally there is a layer of non-conducting material between the two plates to ensure that they do not come into contact. This material is called a dielectric and it also affects the electric field that exists between the two plates, as determined by the dielectric's permittivity, epsilon. Using these constants, we can calculate the capacitance of a capacitor as C equals epsilon A over D. As electrons build up on one plate, an electric field is created that wants to stop the inflow of more electrons and push the ones that are currently on the plate off. The opposite is true of the other plate. As electrons are removed from this plate, an electric field is created that wants to stop electrons from flowing away from the plate, and it wants to pull electrons back. Let's say that Q is the total charge that is on each plate with units of coulombs. If we measure the voltage V across the capacitor as a result of the charge Q, we can calculate the capacitor's capacitance as C equals Q over V. The circuit for this experiment is extremely simple. It is simply a resistor and a capacitor connected in series, sometimes with the power supply in line as well. This type of circuit is called an RC circuit and the characteristic behavior is determined by its time constant, tau, which is equal to the resistance of the resistor times the capacitance of the capacitor. It's literally in the name, RC circuit. For our experiment, we want the time constant to be between 0.5 and 2 seconds. As an example, the time constant for a 2.2 kilo ohm resistor with a 220 microfarad capacitor is 0.484 seconds. I'm going to do a very quick derivation for the two required equations. I have included a PDF with a much more detailed derivation if you want to see this done step by step. For the charging case, we have three components in the circuit. The first is the Arduino, which outputs a DC voltage at Vs volts, S for source. The second component is the resistor, which causes a voltage drop equal to the current flowing through it, I, times its resistance, R. The last component is the capacitor, which causes some voltage drop, Vc. Using Kirchhoff's loop rule, we obtain the equation Vs is equal to Ir plus Vc. The process of determining the amount of current can be thought of as putting an imaginary plate through the wire and counting the number of electrons that pass through the imaginary plate in some amount of time. Or, in more mathematical terms, the current is a small quantity of electrons, dq, that flows through a barrier in a short amount of time, dt. The d in dq and dt is a calculus thing. For simplicity, you can think of this as meaning a small amount of. Here it would be a small amount of charge passes through the barrier in a small amount of time. This gives us an amount of charge to move in a given time, or current flow. Now we can substitute the equation for capacitance, C equals Q over V, that we had earlier to obtain this. All we've done is solve the capacitance equation for Q and substitute it into the current equation. This result can be substituted back into our original equation. A bit of algebra, some doodling of integral signs, and we find this mess of letters. There are two integrals to be performed, and they are quite simple. The two limits that we have for the integral are t equals 0, which is the moment in time when the capacitor starts to charge, and t equals t prime, which is just some arbitrary time that we are interested in and occurs after the capacitor has started charging. After integrating and evaluating at the limits, the left hand side integrates to t, and the right hand side is just the natural logarithm of vs minus vc divided by vs. Vc is in the logarithm, so the last step will be to exponentiate each side and solve for Vc. This last equation is just using the time constant, which is defined as Rc. The case for the discharging capacitor is the simplest, as there are only two components in the circuit. There is a resistor with a voltage drop of Ir and the capacitor, which supplies the voltage of Vc. We will be using the same equation for the current as before. However, since the capacitor is now discharging, there is a negative sign introduced. 
Substituting this in, we find that VC is equal to negative RC dVC over dt. Once again, we use some algebra and scribble in some integral lines to obtain this. Integrating and evaluating at t equals 0 and t equals t prime, we obtain this result. Here, V0 is the initial voltage across the capacitor before the circuit was closed, and VC is the voltage as a function of time as the capacitor discharges. Once again, the quantity we are interested in, VC, is in the logarithm, so we will exponentiate both sides and solve to get our final result. I am using an electrolytic capacitor which has positive and negative terminals, which are labeled. As you can see here, there is a silver band over the one terminal indicating that it is the negative terminal. Also, since it takes more lines to make a plus sign, the positive terminal is made longer. There are other types of capacitors. One example is a ceramic capacitor, which are non-polar and it doesn't matter how you connect them in your circuit. The downside is they tend to have much smaller capacities. Also, capacitors store charge, which means that when you disconnect them from a circuit, they can still hold electrical energy. You should always discharge capacitors before touching their terminals so you and the electronic devices around don't get shocked. For these experiments, you can click Discharge Capacitor before removing it. The Arduino's pin 8 will be used to power the circuit. I want to take a moment and point out that Arduinos are not designed to provide very much power to circuits. My Uno is designed to provide a maximum of 20 milliamps per pin. To protect your Arduino when performing this experiment, you must use a resistor of 500 ohms or greater, which limits the current draw to a maximum of 10 milliamps, making the experiment safe. Pin 8 is connected to the resistor, which is connected to the positive terminal of the capacitor, and finally the negative terminal of the capacitor is connected to ground. The only thing left to do is connect a wire from pin A0 to the capacitor's positive terminal. This allows us to measure the voltage across the capacitor itself, I'm going to run the experiments using three different time constants obtained using different combinations of two resistors and two capacitors. The resistors are 2.2 kilo ohm and 4.7 kilo ohm, and the capacitors are 220 microfarad and 470 microfarad. This results in approximate time constants of 0.5 seconds, 1 second, and 2.2 seconds. For the charging experiment, the Arduino's pin 8 will be switched to high. 5 volts in this case, causing the capacitor to charge. The Arduino is acting like a simple 5 volt power supply. The voltage across the capacitor will be recorded and displayed on screen in real time. As you can see, the longer the time constant, the longer it takes for the capacitor to reach a high voltage state. The larger the capacitance, the more charge the capacitor can store. The greater the resistance of the resistor, the slower charge builds up on the capacitor. As the experiment finishes, a plot of the current is provided as well. The Arduino cannot measure current directly, and as a result, these are calculated results. This experiment shows the results of the capacitor discharging. In this case, pin 8 is set to low, connecting it directly to ground. The Arduino is now acting as if it's not even in the circuit, but it's as if the resistor is being used to make a direct connection across the capacitor. With these results, we can consider the effects of capacitance on a computer processor. The transistor inside a CPU do not simply switch between high and low when a voltage is applied to them. Transistors have a small capacitance. Gate delay is the time required for current to flow in or out of a transistor, causing it to switch to a high or low state. As a result, the speed that a processor can run is limited by how fast the transistors can switch states. Considering how small transistors are in modern CPUs, this isn't the main limitation. Heat is. However, this has been an important limitation in the past and can still be an issue today. This is part of the reason that voltages have to be increased when the frequency of the CPU is increased. This last experiment uses a power supply that is quickly switching from the high to the low state. The amount of time that it takes for the power supply to turn on, stay high, switch low, and stay low is called the duration. After this, the power will cycle high-low again. The percent duration of time that the power supply remains in the high state is called the duty cycle. This is an example with a pulse duration of 100 milliseconds and a duty cycle of 80%. The pulse is high for 80 milliseconds and low for 20 milliseconds, and then repeats. Here are the results for the capacitor. As you can see, the voltage across the capacitor does not reach the full high or low voltage. It bounces around in a small region between the high and low voltages. I'm going to show the results for one RC circuit. You can try it out for yourself and see what effect the time constant, pulse duration, and duty cycle has. Capacitors are often used in circuits to electronically isolate different components from each other. 
Consider the example where an electric motor turns on and has a large, sudden current draw. This can cause voltage fluctuations to pass through the circuit, causing errors for digital chips. If a capacitor is placed in line before the load, a motor in this case, the sudden draw will pull from the capacitor. Capacitors can also be placed on the wires providing power to digital chips. If the voltage of the power wires starts to vary, up or down, the capacitor will help stabilize the voltage, ensuring the chips continue to operate correctly. Thank you for checking out this episode. Let me know in the comments if there are any physical constants, equations, laws, or experiments that you would like to see. Have a good day.